Welcome everyone, welcome to RJ Boxing s &T. Today we've got something brand new for you, which is going to be pound for pound top 10. So yeah, for those who don't know what a pound for pound top 10 is, it is the 10 best fighters on the planet out of any weight division in boxing right now. It basically means what it has always meant for years is every fighter, if they were the same weight, who would be the best, who's the most skilled, who hits the hardest for their weight, etc. So yeah, your top 10 fighters on the planet right now in any weight division. Let's go. So Ravi, I'll let you start. Who's your number 10, the first on your list, pound for pound? My number 10 is Ryan Garcia. The reason why I'm picking Garcia is because he's got, utilises great power. He's got a beautiful left hook and he's got great footwork. So I'm going with Garcia and also he had a blinding win against Devon Haney and shocked the world. Yeah, Ryan Garcia, I can see why you got him in there. And just quickly, people, we forgot to mention, obviously we're starting with number 10 going all the way up to number one. So if you want to find out who we think the best fighter on the planet is, pound for pound, you've got to stay tuned to the end. Rabbit number 10's gone with Ryan Garcia. I'm going with David Benavidez, the Mexican monster, one of the most exciting fighters on the planet. Some people might think it's a bit too early to have him in there, but I think he's a beast. He's already beat the likes of Caleb Plant, Demetrius Andrade, Canelo, who is right near the top of the list. Many people believe he's ducking David Benavidez. He's got power. He's got speed. He's explosive. He'll walk you down. He's now going up to a new weight division, which is what Power for Pound is all about. So, yeah, one of the best young fighters on the planet, David Benavidez. Who's your number nine? My number nine is Javon A. Tank Davis. A guy I know many people have actually got higher on their list and I do really rate Tank. Without doubt, one of the best fighters on the planet. Got power, got skills, he's elusive. He's got some big wins, but the thing that's stopping me from putting him in the top five yet, he hasn't got any elite wins. He needs an elite win over the likes of Lomachenko, Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney, someone like that. So far, he's beat Ryan Garcia, who's a good fighter, but I don't think he's elite. Leo Santa Cruz, the same. But he's shown he's above those guys, so that's why he's definitely in my top 10 and definitely got a potential to be top five in the future. Rav, who's your number nine? My number nine is Tyson Fury, which I felt was very unlucky against Yuzik, and he lost. He's a unified champion. Now he's a former unified champion, but when they fight again, I feel that he's going to beat Yuzik and he's going to become the undisputed. So you think even though he's lost, he's still got the skills to hang with the guys in the yeah, top 10 people like that? He's in, my, he's in the t number nine now, but he'll be going up the rankings. If he gets a win against using, he's going up, mate. Exactly. A loss doesn't define you. You can still be pound for pound top 10, even though you've taken a loss. It's going to make him hungrier for the fight. Yeah, So definitely. I think he's gonna be, his training camp is going to be a lot better. He's going to sort his corner out and watch his space. Oh, who have you got number eight, Rob? Number eight, I've got Javonta Davis, the tank. I totally agree with what Jack said, so my statement is pretty much the same as what Jack said. He utilised his power and got great boxing skills. Yeah, and number eight, I've got Vasil Lomachenko. A guy who's actually in the same weight division as Javante Davis, and hopefully they can fight soon because they're two of the best fighters around. I just think with Lomachenko, I know some people are saying he's a bit on the slide, but he's still one of the most skillful fighters on the planet. Look what he just did to a world-class fighter in George Cambosos. Beat him up and the, became the first man to stop him. And he beat, he well, no, he should have beat Devin Haney on the scorecard. Though he was obviously robbed in that fight. But that shows the level that he's at. Because Devin Haney is an elite young fighter. And Vasil Lomachenko still beat him in many people's eyes. Definitely, clearly in my eyes and on my scorecard. I had him winning by eight rounds to four in that one. And if you look at the guys above him, Lomachenko... It has got a deeper, better resume, resume, like the names and that he's got on there. And he's in like his mid-30s and fighting at a weight division that he's really too small for. And that's what Pound for Pound is all about. Number seven, Jack. I've got at number seven, Arta Better Bev, the Russian beast, the beast from the east. Man, if you haven't got this guy in your top 10 Pound for Pound, then I don't know what you're doing. You must not have watched any boxing in your life. This guy is a complete fighter, man. As close to complete as you can get. At 39 years old, he's still an animal in there. He will break you down. He will knock you out. He will make you fold under his pressure. But he can also outbox you too on the front foot and the back foot. There's this misconception about Better Bev that he's just a brawler. He ain't. He has got elite skills too, which is why he was one of the best amateurs in the world. This guy dropped Alexander Usyk 
with a body shot in the amateurs and gave him a really good fight. That shows you just how tough this guy is, pound for pound. And of course, he is the only world champion in boxing that's knocked out everybody he's fought as a pro. There's no denying how great this guy is. Rav, who you got at number seven? I've got David Benavides, the Mexican monster. The reason why I chose him because he's a great fighter. He's got two times he won the super middleweight, but they've been taken away from him, the wins, because obviously drugs and being overweight. So why, the question is, why do, is Canelo ducking him? Canelo is ducking him because he's up there with the elite fighters. That's my opinion. He's right up there. I know he's young, but he's got a long way to come. But he'll be number one soon. Watch. So Rav, now we're getting real close to the top five where it gets really interesting. Just outside at number six, who you got in that position? I've got the same fighter as Jack has got a number seven, Arta Betabiv. The reason why I've got Arta Betabiv, he's got a knockout ratio of 20 fights, 20 knockouts. So it's 100%. 100%. If Arta Betabiv knocks Biv out, he'll be the only undisputed champion to have a 100% knockout ratio, which is unbelievable. Who's your pan for pan number six? Number six, I've got a guy that not many people might have in their list, or some people might not even know at the minute, a guy called Bam Rodriguez. The reason he's not that known is because he's a flyweight. He only weighs eight stone, a very small fighter in stature, but a very big fighter in terms of his skills and his power. If you haven't seen this guy yet, people, go and watch him, and I bet you straight away he'll go in your top 10, pad for pad, or maybe just outside at least anyway. He's already a two-weight world champion at the age of 25. I'd say he's the best young fighter in boxing. He's already got two wins. I said earlier in the video, to get into my like top of the list, you have to get wins over elite guys. He's got that. He beat Carlos Quadras in his first world title fight and then knocked out Sorong Visai, who is one of the best super flyweights of all time. This was all at a weight that he jumped up to without even being that naturally at two weeks' notice as well. He took his first fight there. That's what Pava Pan's all about. He then dropped back down to beat the best in the weight division in Sonny Edwards, a guy who everyone thinks is so skillful, and he is. But Bam Rodriguez took him apart, made him look average, outboxed him, stopped him, dropped him, completely fucked him up the whole night and showed what level he's at. I'm going to say this now. I think in two, three years' time, Bam Rodriguez could be the pound for pound or will be the pound for pound number one and will be like a four or five weight world champion. There's no limit to how far this guy can go, man. He is brilliant. So make sure you check him out. All right, we're in the top five now. And people, you're going to be very interested in who we've got at our number fives because they've actually fought each other kind of recently too. I'll give you mine first, Canelo Alvarez. I don't, he needs no introduction. Any boxing fan in the world, whether you're a hardcore fan or a casual, will know or should know who Canelo Alvarez is, unless you've been living under a rock or something for like the last 10 years. He is a legend. He's been a legend for like the fast, last five years. He became a legend in his mid-20s. His resume is unbelievable. He's beat the likes of Sergei Kovalev, Gennady Golovkin, Austin Trout, Miguel Cotto, Danny Jacobs. The list just goes on and on. Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Clark, Callum Smith... All at super middleweight. He's been world champion in four weight divisions too. He's dared to be great and got up to the weight above at 175 pounds, which leads me on to the guy he's fought, who Rav's got a number five, Dimitri Bivol. How come you got him at number five? The reason why I got Bivol at number five, I thought that he's got a good work rate and he's got good punch output and he's got really good movement. And I think he's an outstanding boxer, Jack. How come you got Bivol above Canelo? Yeah, so Bivol is my number four. And I know some people will say, oh, Canelo only lost to Bivol because he went up in weight. That's not my opinion. I know he did go up in weight and it's not his natural weight division like heavyweight. But Bivol is a small light heavyweight. He wasn't much bigger than Canelo. Canelo has beat people at light heavyweight before. He's beat super middleweights that are much taller and bigger than Dimitri Bivol. Callum Smith, perfect example. Six foot three, Bivol six foot. Callum Smith is massive, got a much longer range. Bivol didn't even use his size against Canelo. The reason he beat him was because he had the much better boxing skills and he outworked and picked Canelo off all night and just didn't let Canelo do the usual smooth, slick things he does. So yeah, for that reason is why I got him above Canelo. The reason I got him in my top four, pound for pound, the, one of the four most skillful fighters on the planet is because, like Rav just said, he is so good with his boxing skills. 
His judging of range and distance, I think, is the best out there. One of the best of all time. His footwork and his little movements in and out are absolutely incredible. His jab's phenomenal. His right hand's phenomenal. He's got power when he actually uses it. But boxing skills-wise, if you had this guy number one, I wouldn't argue with you. I just think he needs a, maybe a win against the likes of Better Beer, who he's going to be fighting soon to put him right up there and really stake his claim. Because at the minute, his biggest win is Canelo Alvarez, who did come up in weight, so people will say that to put him down a bit lower at the minute. But then he did beat Zerdo Ramirez, a massive light heavyweight from Mexico just afterwards as well. So he's definitely up there for me. Rav, how come you've got Canelo at number four? Even though Bivol beat him, you've got Canelo above. Is that just because you think Canelo is better if they fought at their actual recommended weights? Yeah, I think Canelo is better. I think he's a better all-rounder of a boxer. His boxing skills might not be as good, but... I feel that he lost because he didn't, he focused too much on power and he'd done too much strength and conditioning, which slowed him down. Obviously, too much muscle man, muscle mass needs more oxygen in your muscle. So I feel that he was getting fatigued later on in rounds. Maybe if we went a different approach and worked more on his boxing skills, more on his movements, he would have beat him. Yeah, so that is a good point, actually. And I can understand what you're saying there. It's not that Bivol used his size, it just means that Canelo isn't as good at light heavyweight because of the yeah, extra muscle yeah. he's got. And that's a good point that not many people think about there. Yeah? The top three best fighters on the planet. We actually agree on these ones. We've got the same three fighters in the same three positions. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys watching out there, everyone in the world will have it the same. So let's jump into it. My number three and Rav's number three is Naoa Anue. The monster from Japan. We've got the Mexican monster in David Benavidez a bit lower on this list. The Japanese monster is right up at the top. Some people actually do have Anue as number one still. But I think the two guys above him deserve it a little bit more at the minute. But Anue, man, he's spanned across five weight divisions already by the age of 30. Four weight world champion, undisputed in two weights. He seems to be getting bigger, better and stronger every weight he goes through and carrying his power up. It's rare that fighters usually do that. I think he could make history in Nui and become like a freeweight undisputed champ. Go out to featherweight, go down in history. The first male to ever do that. And he could maybe become like a seven, eight division world champion like Manny Pacquiao. It sounds crazy, but he's that good of a fighter. Make sure you watch him if you haven't seen him. But I'm sure if you're a boxing fan, you have. Rav, is there anything you want to add about Nui? It is just really his power and his skill. Isn't it? Yeah, pretty much the same as Jack, but I just want to big him up how good he is. I really like watching him. He's really an entertaining fighter, but he's the undisputed, so that says it all. Guys, a number two, pound for pound, is Terence Crawford. The reason why I'm picking him at number two is because he's a great boxer. He can switch stances. He's really awkward to fight, and he's got great power. Yeah, Bud Crawford, man. Rav just summed it up there. He's an all-round fighter. One of the best switch-hitting boxers of all time. He's a freeweight world champ, undisputed in two ways. Absolutely smashed Errol Spence with ease, who was meant to be the hardest fight of his career. I've actually been saying for like the last five years, Bud Crawford is the one of the best fighters on the planet. I thought he was pound for pound number one at the time. He just needed the fights to prove it. But it was the Errol Spence one when people really found out. Is that the main reason you got in that high? Definitely. Just because of how easily he dealt with Errol Spence? Yeah, because when I watched that fight against Errol Spence, he didn't just beat him, he schooled him. He done very well. He outboxed him and outpowered him. Sp Errol Spence couldn't handle him. And Errol Spence is an elite fighter. Yeah. Guys, I'll let Rav tell you who our number one is, but I think you all know who it is. The man who just become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Who is it, Rav? It is Alexandra Yuzik. He is number one because he beat Tyson Fury. And you know how much a big of a fan I am of Tyson Fury. And to beat Tyson Fury in my books is a big statement. So that says it all. Yeah, Usyk sums up what pound for pound is about. He would become undisputed at Cruiserweight, which and the guys he beat made him a pound for pound top 10 without that then. But then to go up to heavyweight and start fighting guys who are three stone heavier than you, much taller, much bigger, meant to be much stronger and hit much harder and absolutely batter them. Hopefully Joshua and Tyson Fury are two of the best heavyweights of like the last few eras, the two best heavyweights of the last eight years about that. This small Ukrainian guy has come up from the weight below and absolutely pummeled both of them with ease really as well. So yeah, you can't deny you sick man. He's the, the number one fighter on the planet, pound for pound without doubt. He's the deserving heavyweight king. He's a role model 
to many people, kids, everyone, uh, aspiring boxers around the world. But he's in the ring talking is when it really matters. And he's without that number one pound for pound. Is there anything else you want to add, Rav? I just want to add big up to Alexandra Yuzik. But I can't wait for the rematch because I'm going to say it because I'm a Fury fan. He's going to train really hard, so he's training Cam out, and I think he's going to beat him. Oh, so Rav thinks that maybe Fury can come and take that heavyweight crown and pound for pound crown in the future. That means you've got to stay tuned for our next pound for pound, which will come after the Usyk Fury fight later in the year or early next year. Subscribe and make sure you stay tuned for many more videos like this to come and see if our next pound for pound is different because a lot of shit goes on in boxing, so it probably will be completely different by then. Guys and girls, we want to hear your top 10 pound for pound. Chuck them in the comments and see if you agree with us.